Hi there, I am the toxic hamster. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, fuck off. Just another fucking animal on YouTube. Yeah, well, I'm fucking toxic. And also, I'm in a tux. Well, fuck it. I found this article. I thought I'd share. And, um, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. It's this gender fluid crap again. Yeah, it is. I think it's a kind of important subject to touch down upon. I want to excuse myself beforehand. English is not my primary language and um, I'm very new to this. So let's dive right into it. Okay, I am not as good as this, as this, as you sh maybe should expect, but um, I'm gonna give it a try anyway. I came about this article by the American College of Pediatricians, I found rather interesting on uh, how gender ideology harms children. And I kind of agree uh, on them on this point. Uh, I find it rather disgusting. This is being pushed on kids in schools uh, and by these women studies majors things. Feminists, I don't want to know what to call them. Insane people is what I fucking call them. This is insane people. I can't even grasp how far out this is of denial of nature. I, 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 I really I, I find it disgusting. But enough of that, let's go into the article. The American College of Pediatricians urges educators, legislators to reject all policies that condition children to accept a normal life of medical and surgical impersonation of the opposite sex. Facts, not ideology, determine reality. And this is a concept I see every pushed everywhere uh, at, uh, these, these days. It's not reality in the media, in the news, in the, in the, it, it's all made up fucking crap, all to push some f insane agenda, I don't even want to know what they're into, but it has nothing to do with reality, it's creating a virtual reality. Back into the article. Number one, human sexuality is an objective biological binary trait. XY and XX are genetic markers of health, not genetic markers of a disorder. The norm for human design is to be conceived either male or female. Human sexuality is binary by design with the obvious purpose of being the reproduction and flourishing of our species. This principle is self-evident. The exceedingly rare disorders of sexual development, SDS, include but not limited to Sexual feminination, feminization, and cognitive adrenal hyperplasia. Yeah, you know. Are all medical definable deviations from the sexual binary norm and are rightly recognized as the orders of human design. 
individuals with SDS, uh, DSDs, sorry, do not constitute a third sex. That is kind of the point of the whole discussion with gender fluidness. No one is born with the gender. Everyone is born with the biological sex, gender and awareness and sense of oneself as male or female is a so sociological and psychological concept, not an objective biological one. No one is born with an awareness of themselves as male or female. This awareness develops over time and like all development processes may be derailed by a child's subjective perceptions, relationships and adverse experience from infancy forward. People who identify as feeling like the opposite sex or somewhere in between does not compromise a third sex. They remain biological or bio biological men or biological women. Again, very discussed point. Three, a person's belief that he or she is something they are not is at best a sign of confused thinking. When an otherwise healthy biological boy believes he's a girl, or an otherwise healthy biological girl believes she's a boy, an objective psychological problem exists that lies in the mind, not the body. And it should be treated as such. These children suffer from gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria, GD, formerly listed as gender identity disorder, a GID, is a recognized mental disorder in most recent editions of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association, DSMV. The psychodynamic and social learning theories of GD, GID have never been disproved. Four. Puberty is not a disease and puberty blocking hormones can be very dangerous. Reversibly or not, puberty blocking hormones induce a state of disease, the absence of puberty, and inhibit the growth and fertility in a previously biologically healthy child think that is kind of important to emphasize. This gender fluidness comes at a price because at some point these gender fluid whack jobs is gonna get the idea from their friends that they want hormones. And we'll come to that later. Number five. According to the DSMV, as many as 98% of gender-confused boys and 88% <coughs> sorry, of gender-confused girls <coughs> eventually accept the biological sex after natural passing through puberty. It's a process. Everyone questions their sexuality 
It's a process of becoming a man or becoming a woman. Everyone does it. If not, then they missed a part of their life. That's my argument in that. Six, children who use puberty blockers to impersonate the opposite sex will require cross-sex hormones in late adolescence. Cross-sex hormones, testosterone and estrogen, are associated with dangerous health risks, including but not limited to high blood pressure, blood clots, stroke and cancer. Number seven. Rates of suicide are 20 times greater among adults who use cross-sex hormones and undergo sex reassignment surgery, even in Sweden, which is among the most LBTQ sets, FQB, G, G, affirming countries. What compassionate and reasonable person would condemn a young children to this fate, knowing that after puberty, as many as 88% of girls and 98% of boys will eventually accept reality and achieve a state of mental and physical health? This is what I mean. You are confused as a child. You do wrong things. That is why boundaries are needed. They need to know. They need to challenge you those boundaries. They need to find out why the things they think might not work on the other side. That is why we have this. And it is not a bad thing to be a man. It's not a bad thing to be a woman. A woman wants a man. Men want women. And there are those who want the same sexes and the very, very, very few who manage to find a good life even though they are born in the wrong body. But promoting this to kids provoke the amount of people going through this. And as I know the states and and, and many other countries like the UK and, and uh, uh, many other places, they are really fast to allow kids on hormones and things that really ruin their life. Think about it. It's a couple of years where they are confused. Then they grow up, they get a job, they get a partner, they get a beautiful life, they enjoy it. It's a part of growing up. But put them on hormones. I'm not seeing the good life coming out of that. I'm, I'm really not. Number eight, conditioning children into believing that a lifetime of chemical and surgical impersonation of the opposite sex is normal and healthful. It is child abuse. I completely agree on this one. Endorsing gender disordinance as normal via public education and legal policies will confuse both children and parents, leading to more children present to the gender clinics in quotation. These are not gender clinics. These are places made to promote gender change. Go on the hormones. You'll have a great life, we'll cut off your genitals, you'll be whatever you want to be, if even it's a fruit. 
and will never mention the consequences for you by doing this. Back to the article. Where they will be given puberty blocking drugs, this in turn virtually ensures that they will choose a lifetime of carcinogenic and otherwise toxic cross-sex hormones and likely to consider unnecessary surgical modulation, mutilation sorry, of their healthy body parts as young adults. Now this is made by a Michelle A. Critella, MD, President of American College of Pediatricians, and the Quinton Van Meter, MD, Vice President of the American College of Pediatricians, and Paul McHugh, Medical Doctor, University Distinguished Service Professor of Psychiatry, Psychiatry at John Hopkins Medical School and the former psychiatrist psychiatrist in chief at John Hopkins Hospital. Now, if I remember correctly, he was the actual doctor who were the cutting edge uh, researcher uh, in this field back way back in the 60s. Now, feminism caught up in, in this uh, gender uh, thing in the 70s and started pushing it as a, a political term to enforce their will. And that is my uh, one of my uh, arguments in this. This is an idea uh, ideology in the same path as any religion. Because a woman studies major or some random lunatic professor puts their name on a paper doesn't mean that it is actually the truth. The bottom line, our opponents advocate a newly scientifically baseless standard of care for children with a psychological condition that would otherwise resolve after puberty for the mass, vast majority of patients concerned. Specifically, they advise affirmation of children's thoughts which are contrary to the physical reality. The chemical castration of these children prior to pu puberty with GnRH agnostics puberty blockers which cause infertility, stunted growth, low bone density and an unknown impact upon their brain development. And finally, the permanent sterilization of these children prior to the age of 18 via cross-sex hormones. We are talking about sterilizing the kids before they are even grown up. There is an obvious self-fulfilling nature to encourage young GD children to impersonate the opposite sex and then institute pubertal suppression. If a boy who quenches questions whether or not he's a boy who is meant to grow into a man is treated as a girl, then has his natural pubertal progression into manhood suppressed. This is what I talked about, suppressing the natural cause into becoming a, an, ad, an, an adult. 
some could argue that you then will remain in childhood. Then have we not set in motion an inevitable outcome? All of his same-sex peers develop into young men. His opposite-sex friends develop into young women, but he remains a prepubertal boy. He will be left. He will be left psychosocially isolated and alone. He will be left with the psychological impression that is some that that something is wrong. He will be less able to identify with his same sex peers and being male and thus are more likely to self-identify as a non-male or female. Moreover, neuroscience reveals that the prefrontal cortex of the brain, which is responsible for judgment and risk assessment, is not mature until the mid-twenties. Never has it been more scientifically clear that children and adolescents are incapable of making informed decisions regarding permanent, irreversible and life-altering medical interventions. This is kind of important in my opinion. For this reason the college maintains it is abusive to promote this ideology. First and foremost for the well-being of the gender dysphoric children themselves and secondly for all the non-gender disoriented peers many of whom will subsequently question their own gender identity and face violations of their rights to bodily privacy and safety. This is important. The privacy, the right to privacy, especially when it comes to a body. And this is the opposite. It's not helping anyone. We don't need the government to do this for us. And they don't need to teach it in schools. If those having issues with gender dysphoria is really having a problem with being bullied and so on and so on. It would be a lot better to raise awareness about the bullying or the concept, not to jam it down throats of kids in schools. That is brainwashing. And it will cause problems, a lot of problems. It is our nature. We are designed to make the best when we are a couple. I don't care how you manage to break this couple, but when we are a couple, we are better suited to manage a family, the kids get a good platform from which to to to, to spring on and and be the best they are, they can be. It gives a solid foundation, and the mean it means the world in producing offspring that is individual who can think for themselves who are able to create, who are able to flourish. That is just my opinion. Let me know what you think.